Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be with you guys again tonight. It's good to know the love and the strength and the peace of God that is in our lives, to know the power and the authority that he has and all that he does for us tonight. You know, God is reaching into our lives daily and moving and blessing and making ways in our lives when there's moments that we don't realize or we don't always know it. But my friends tonight, I'm thankful that I serve a God who never fails. That I serve a God who is always present, who is always able. And in those moments and times when I need him, I'm thankful that he is definitely that present help in a time of trouble. One of the most challenging things that I find is whether you're just a person who comes and you worship God daily in your ministry, walk with God, and you're witnessing to others, or if you pastor or preach or sing or teach or whatever, one of the things that, well, a couple of things that I find challenging within a ministry walk with God, and, that, and there's many more tonight, guys. This is not an exhausted list, but there's three things that, that I want to talk about tonight that I find that within your ministry walk that can be challenging the areas of your life in your ministry that the enemy tries to attack and destroy or to change in your life. And that is trusting, waiting, and believing. You know, tonight when we say that we trust God, as God calls us to go out into the world and calls us to be a minister, causes us to do ministry work. You know, we have to trust God tonight, that Brother Rocky, that the work that God has called us to do, that he effectively accomplish each and everything as we're being obedient unto him. But there's moments and times in our lives that, Sister Cindy, that when that trusting along that journey sometimes can be challenging in that ministry walk. When God asks us to do things that we can't fully comprehend, that we fully can't wrap our mind around, or we can't always fully see the answer to, Sister Crystal, that sometimes that it can be very challenging and trusting. And I think about Sister Brenda tonight when I say trust in the Lord. You know, that's what genuine faith is all about. Genuine faith is not commanding God to do anything. Genuine faith, Brother Philip, is trusting God at all moments, at all times, in every situation. And, and my friend tonight, I can tell you that personally as a pastor, and I can tell you as Christians, that I see that being challenged by the enemy many, many times. And and, and I think about a particular set of scripture in general tonight. I think about when God had asked Abraham to take his son Isaac upon the mountain as a sacrifice. Boy, let me tell you, I don't know Sister Jacqueline about anyone else, but, but as a Christian, as a pastor and a preacher, you know, thinking about taking my only son that I had asked for. Now, we know he had another son by his handmaid, but this was the son that was promised unto Abraham. And, and here God has asked him, Abraham, take your son upon the mountain and sacrifice him unto me. Now, <clears throat> Abraham didn't know that, Brother Philip, that God had a plan for him. But, but Abraham had to put his trust in the God who had called him out from his people and led him out into the desert to be his God and that they may be his people. And Brother Stewart, let me tell you, that would be very hard to trust God in that moment, wouldn't it? Come on, let's be honest. As humans, we can look back at the story. We see the end, and we'd be like, oh, I could do that. That ain't no problem at all. Well, let me be honest with you tonight, church. As a pastor, and I'm just going to put myself out there. I'm not going to preach on too many of you, but I'm going to preach on Pastor Perry a little bit, if that's okay. As a pastor, I can tell you that I am trying to trust God. I am trying to put my faith in God and the calling that God has placed on my life. But I'm going to tell you tonight that, Brother Rocky, that there's times when God lays a message on my heart or, or, or a scripture on my mind to preach on or teach on. And, man, I'm excited. Man, I think so. Sister Crystal, that when I go and preach this or teach this, that, that man, God is going to use this in a great way, and I'm going to see some amazing things happen. I'm going to see people uh, rejoice. I'm going to see people set free. I'm going to see some things taking place. But, but Brother Mike, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes, man, I go and I preach and teach those messages, and I don't always physically see 
Now listen to me now. I don't always physically see God doing that in people's lives because people are not responding the way that I think they should to give me that confirmation that God is doing the work. But Sister Jacqueline, what I have to do is that I have to trust that if God put that message on my heart, that God is speaking to someone that needs to hear, whether they respond in the way they should or not, does not mean that God is not working. So see... I have to trust God in those moments because I'm going to tell you that that as a pastor, Sister Cindy, as I'm going out and I'm doing my best to live for the Lord and I'm trying to preach and teach and minister and love and, and visit and all the things that we're supposed to do as ministers, you know, when I see someone lead the church or I see someone struggle in their relationship with God or whenever I see someone who amens a message and then turns around and does the opposite of what they're amening, I'll be honest with you. I I take that for myself. See, see, yeah, and I agree, Sister Jacqueline. It, it's my job to preach that message. It's their job to receive it and accept it and let it be applied to their life. But, but hear me, what I'm saying. But it's it it works on your trust. It works on your believing as a preacher and a pastor when you don't always see the impact that you're expecting to see, but that does not mean that God is not working. Abraham did not know that God was going to make a sacrifice in place of his son Isaac but Abraham had to trust in God. He had to believe that God had a plan and that God's plan was sufficient. And, and, and so he took his son and they took and went up on the mountain. They left the servants behind and they went up on the mountain. And I think about that section of scripture where Isaac says, where is the sacrifice? And, and I can only imagine what transpired in Abraham's heart and in Isaac's heart as Abraham prepared to sacrifice Isaac unto the Lord and before God spoke to him and told him to stop. And, and, and he provided for him a sacrifice. Tonight, church, I know that there's, there's many of you, not only are you preachers and pastors and teachers and singers, but many of you are servants in the Lord. And, and sometimes your witness, sometimes your ministry, sometimes what you're doing for God, sometimes the devil wants to attack that because he wants to cause you to doubt or to trust in the work that God is doing in your life. Because what we are, we are living in a time tonight, church, that that we no longer want to wait upon the Lord. See, that's the next thing, is waiting upon the Lord. You know, the Word of God said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Huh? So, but tonight we have a hard time waiting, Sister Crystal, because we live in a society where everything is instantaneous. You know, if we go to the store and we want something and it's not there, do you know what? We get on the internet and we buy it, and instead of us waiting that 7 to 12 days, we'll pay extra money to get it shipped overnight and get it within 24 hours. When we roll up to the, the we go to fast foods, man, fast food places are just just bombing and making a fortune because we want it right away. We want to pull up, give our order, pull up to the window, pay it, and get our food and keep on going. You know what? That's what we expect out of the ministry work of God. And guys, it doesn't always work that way. Yes, there have been times that, Sister Cindy, that I've laid hands on people under the power of God and prayed over their lives, and I've seen instant healings. I've seen instant changes. But there's also been times when we had to fast and pray. Remember the Word of God talks about, Jesus talked about with the people. He said, they brought some people unto Jesus said, your disciples could not cast this demon out of them. And Jesus said, this kind only comes out through and by prayer and fasting. See, Sometimes, because we are so used to getting it instantly and we want it right now, we don't want to wait upon the Lord, Brother Rocky, to do the work that he wants to do. But I promise you tonight, church, if you learn to keep believing, if you learn to keep trusting, and if you learn to wait upon God and let God do things his way, I promise you the 
outcome will be much better than you could ever expect it. See, here's the one thing, and I'm sorry, I hope I don't offend anybody with this statement. I don't mean to, but there's one thing as a pastor and a preacher that I've never done in my preaching ministry is I do not go back at the altar call and pull people up to the altar because I'm going to tell you something. I'm a firm believer. If man can pull you up, the world will pull you back. I want to wait upon the Lord, and it's not easy as a pastor, Mike, when I'm up there preaching and, and I see people that I know who need to come to that altar and, and God is speaking to them, you can see it. Any preacher and pastor will tell you that when you're standing up there and you're looking back as you're preaching, you can see who God's speaking to. And you can see that God is moving on their hearts in many, many different ways. And when the altar call comes, they don't always come forward. And don't get me wrong, I would love to go back and just drag them up and say, I'm talking to you. But see, I got to wait on God. Because I promise you, as God is working on that heart, when the time is right, that person will come forward, a change will take place, God will move upon that person's life, and they will be stronger, they will stand longer, and they'll weather the storm. But my friend, we've got to learn to trust, to wait, and to believe. And believe me, as a pastor, that's not easy because one of the things that I've done uh, throughout my ministry, throughout my time, what, let me tell you something tonight, church. You know, throughout my time, God has allowed me to pastor small churches, and there's nothing wrong with that. But every church that God has sent me to is a church that has been challenged and, and that we are trying to help them to grow. And let me tell you something. As a pastor who has a passion to see the church grow, Gloria, to watch the people of God be changed, to see things take place, I'm going to tell you, it's very hard to just wait because what I want, Sister Crystal, is I want to show up this coming Sunday and, and the whole church be completely full. But see, I've got to wait. And here's where we got to be careful tonight, church. we got to let God do exactly what His Word says. The Word of God says that God will place them in the body where it pleases Him. When we are trying to force people into the church that God did not plan to be at our church, He he may plan for them to be in another church when we are trying to force people into the foe instead of letting God place them into the foe. My friends, we may cause a lot of trouble and challenge for us, for the church, and for the ministry work. But when we wait upon God and let God bring those people that, that He desires and let them take root and, and let them take hold of the ministry work and let God place them, I promise you, we will be more united. We will be stronger. They will have the same vision. They'll go along together. And I promise you, God can empower them and you could watch things take place. Let me tell you, I know that the disciples that Jesus chose, the world would not have chose them. Could you imagine, uh, Sister Jacqueline, what would have happened during that time if Jesus would have went to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and, and said, give me 12 that, that I can lead in the ministry. Man, they would have chose people that Jesus would have never chose to put in that position. That's the reason we have to be careful and let God do the choosing and the placing. But we don't want to wait on God today, do we? No, sir. We want it our way. We want it when we want it, how we want it, and we want to use whom we want to use. Here's another thing tonight I'm going to tell you, Brother Rocky. Sometimes God wants to use people that nobody else wants to, wants to be used. Sometimes, huh? God reaches out and uses that person. See, here's what we have to think about. If you remember that Jesus told his disciples, he said, I must need go through Samaria. You know, when they went through Samaria, the normal route for Jewish people was not to go through Samaria on their journey. The normal route was to go around. Now, Jesus, as he was going through Samaria, he knew that he was going to meet a woman at a well one day. And you know what he did? He sent his disciples away. Because I'm going to tell you something. At that very moment in time, Sister Crystal, his disciples would not have been able to accept this woman at the well the way that Jesus did for several reasons. Number one, 
you know, Jews didn't have anything to do with Samaritans because Samaritans were half Jew and half Gentile. And, and so the Jews didn't have anything to do with them. So that would have challenged them. Number two, here is a female who has had more husbands than one, and, and that would have challenged them. So there's several things that would have stood in their way, Sister Cindy, of seeing what God was trying to do in this woman's life and how he was going to use this woman to reach that community that day. But Jesus knew what he needed to do, and he sent them away to get food. Then Jesus got to have a moment with this woman, begin to speak to her. And she even said out of her very mouth, Brother Philip, why is it that you being a Jew want to have anything to do with me being a Samaritan? See, tonight, the world cannot see what God sees in us. I know tonight that the world cannot see what God sees in some of these sinners that are out here in the world that he's trying to reach. They can't see it because what they see is they see the outer thing. They see the things that they see and, and they don't want God to call them and change them. But my friend, let me tell you something. I, here goes back to that trusting and believing in God. If God is drawing them out of the world into the church... My friend, you do not have to be afraid of what God is doing. I'm going to trust God that once they get there, that God is going to do the work on their life to change them, to rearrange them, and to get them where they need to be so that he can use them for his kingdom work. If God is drawing them, and we know that God does that according to the book of Acts, that the word of God said that God added unto the church daily. My friend, let me tell you something. When God adds to the church, when when God calls them and draws them, we should not be looking at those that walk through the door and, and try to handpick the ones that we want to keep. We should, when they come through the door, we should say, Lord, help us to have a minister's heart and help us to trust in you and believe in you that whatever work you're trying to do with these people that you're sending to our church, that we don't get in your way, that we don't hinder your spirit, that we don't hinder your work, but Father God, help us to be obedient to your will. Because I'm going to be honest with you tonight. Jacqueline, I can't tell you as a preacher and a pastor how many times that, that I've went to churches to preach or to pastor and, and somebody come up and try to tell me something about someone else. Huh? They, they come up and they want to share with me all the insight about this person. Do you know something tonight? I don't need to know the inside about this person. You want to know why? Because I'm trusting him. He knows them. He knows the intents of their heart. He knows their thoughts are far off. He knows who they are and what they are. And my friends, I'm going to tell you something tonight. What I want to do is just be obedient to him and trust him and wait on God to do the work. Oh, that's a hard time for us tonight, ain't it, as a church? Trusting, waiting, and believing. See, we, we sing that song or we make that statement and, and maybe you've done this at your church and, and, and I've seen it done at other churches that I've seen the preacher or the singer or somebody get up there and they'll say, what's impossible for our God? And the congregation will say, nothing is impossible for our God. But then, woo, but then when that person walks through the door that nobody thinks God can say, what, what, what's the matter with us then? Why is it that we went from people, Sister Crystal, who believe that nothing is impossible for God to the place where we believe, oh God, I don't know if we want that person to come here or not. I don't know if God can use them or save them or change them. Do you know that I had a preacher one time who told me that I was sharing with him about an individual that I saw, Brother Rocky, come and give their life to the Lord, and out of that very man's mouth said, I'll never believe it. I want you to know so that's what's the matter with the church tonight. We've stopped believing that God can save and set sinners free. We've stopped believing that God can reach way below the bottom and change someone's life. We've stopped believing that God can take a blackened heart and make it white as soul. We've stopped believing in the miracle working power of God. Yes, we do, Sister Jacqueline. We limit him and put him in a box. We forget that scripture said. 
What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Why do we want to look at God in some situations and say, I believe that nothing's impossible for him, but then look at God in other situations and say, I just don't know if God's going to work this out or not. Huh? Don't we do that as the church? Come on, be honest with me tonight. Don't we as the church world today do that very thing, Brother John? We limit God to the point where one minute we're saying God can do all things and another minute we're putting limitations on God and we're saying, I don't know if God will get this done or not. See, tonight, my friend, in all things we've got to trust God. Right now, tonight, Brother Stewart, I know that there are people, and I want you to hear me tonight, church, because I believe this and I feel it and I experience it my own self. Tonight, one of the things that we have a hard time is when the enemy starts attacking us. Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? How am I going to get through this? How am I going to overcome this? Sister Kathy, let me tell you something tonight. Just because the enemy is attacking does not mean the enemy can defeat us. Why? Because if we're where we're supposed to be in God Almighty, God is our strong tower. He is our strength. He is our power. He is our authority. He is our deliverer. Huh? Come on tonight. I want you to know that. See, we've got to trust God. Even when the enemy is raging and he's all around us, we've got to continue to trust God. Let me tell you something tonight, church. I know that there are people that are attacking Pastor Perry, trying to attack the things that I preach, trying to attack the things that I teach, trying to attack my character, trying to attack who I am. But let me tell you something. They did not call me, Brother Jay. God called me to do the ministry work. And therefore, I've got to continue to trust in the God who called me, to trust in the God who has the authority, to trust in the God who has the power, and not put my trust in man who do not understand understand and do not have the ability to make things happen trusting in him now i'm going to tell you john it's not always easy on this journey is it so we we say that scripture yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me we can say that but boy, let me tell you something. When we get into the midst of the battle, when we get into the midst of the fight, and it looks like the enemy's raging all around us, when it looks like nothing's working in our favor, when it looks like we're walking through the deepest valley we've ever been in, my friends, let me tell you, keep trusting, keep believing, and wait upon the Lord, because when the time is right, God will send deliverance for you. Huh? Huh? See, we got to believe him tonight, don't we? We got to trust him. We got to wait. And I'm going to tell you, Brother Jay, I, I'm not a person that likes to wait a whole lot. Huh? I'll admit it. Maybe nobody else will tonight, but I'll admit that Pastor Perry's been guilty right there. Lord, I, when I pray about it, I want God to do it instantly. When, when I see stuff going on in the church and I know it's going to be hard for the church, I want God to change it. I want God to fix it. I want God to rearrange it instantly. I don't want to wait on it tonight, do you? Huh? But let me tell you, church, we've got to learn that waiting on God also is a part of trusting and believing. Because if you trust Him and you believe Him, then you have to wait on Him to move when the time is right. Because we know the Scripture said that God will work all things out to the good of them that love and serve the Lord. Church tonight, if you really believe that, then you need to learn to wait on God, trust Him, and believe Him tonight. Well, that's hard. See, I can tell you that over the years, huh? That as a pastor, people expect you to come in, man, and they expect you to grow the church overnight. They expect it to go from 5 to 105 to 205 to 500 to 1,000. They expect it to happen overnight. Let me tell you something. I want to wait upon God and let God do the work because let me tell you, as we wait upon the Lord, God will do the work. And let me tell you, when the day is right, when the time is right, we'll see the victory. We'll see the miracles. We'll see the thing happen and take place and let me tell you when that day comes there'll be no doubt hear me tonight there'll be no doubt who done the work then all credit all honor and all glory will go back to God 
See, and that's what we have to do tonight. See, here in Psalms chapter 27, beginning at verse 1, I like what he says here because it all wraps up what I'm talking about tonight. Trusting, waiting, and believing. Psalms chapter 27, verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Now, I want you to think about that statement tonight. You know, the Word of God says that God does not give us the spirit of fear, but of sound mind. Do you know what tonight, church? There should not be anything or anyone that you as a child of God fear and worry about. But boy, let me tell you, let's be honest tonight, how many people worry? How many people struggle? How many people feel challenged, huh? Pastor Perry's been there. I'm not picking on you. John, I've been right there just like everybody else in moments and situations and circumstances that I did not understand. I don't always know why God called me to go to the places that he called me to go to, but I know this, that Sister Crystal, that he had a plan, and I followed his plan, Sister Brenda, and I'm trusting in his plan. I'm believing in his plan, and I know that as his plan gets fulfilled, he'll get the honor and glory for it all because I don't deserve any of it. I don't understand why that God calls you to do the things you're doing, but my friend tonight, if God is calling you to do it, then my friend, let me tell you something. Obedience according to the word of God is better than sacrifice. You better be obedient to God, but you also in your obedience better trust God, you better believe in God, and you better wait on God to do the work and finish the work and make it right. Because I'm going to tell you something tonight, church. What the world needs is they need a bunch of people who believe in God again, who trust in God again, who understand that in God's times all things work together to good of them. Let me tell you something. I believe there's a scripture that said there's a time for all things. Ain't that right tonight? There's a time to weep, a time to mourn, there's a time to rejoice. Let me tell you, there's a time for all things in God tonight. And what you've got to do is you've got to wait upon that time. See, I, I like that scripture when we look over at Moses and Moses is standing down at the Red Sea with the children of Israel. The sea's in front of him and the army of Egypt is behind him. Boy, and he don't know what he's going to do. See, he could not see the answer and God speaks to him and said, wait, be patient, stand still. Ain't that hard to do tonight, church? Huh? Stand still and see the power of God moving in your life. No, Brother Mike, what we want to do is we want to monkey with it. We want to fix it. We want to force it. We want to get it done instead of waiting on God. And let me tell you, Pastor Perry's been guilty along the way of doing that same very thing, man. And boy, I've been asking God over these years, help me, Lord, to wait upon you. Help me to trust you. Help me to believe because, Father God, I know that you have a plan and that your plan is sufficient. He he said, whom shall I fear? I can't tell you how many people are afraid of what's going on in the world today. Hear me, church, because this is right in the church house tonight. Fear has crept into the heart of many, many Christians, and they're so focused on all the bad stuff of the world. They're so worried about what the government's going to do. They're so worried about what the enemy is doing that they've lost their ability to focus on God and just worship Him, believe Him, trust Him, and follow Him. They're living in fear of what tomorrow holds. I want you to know something. Number one, we are not promised tomorrow. Number one. Number two, the Word of God tells us to not even take thought of tomorrow. Let tomorrow take thought of itself. Number three, my friend, when you're looking forward, worried about what might happen, you are missing what God is doing in the present. See, that's what's the matter a lot of times. Brother Philip, that's the reason why that people come to the house of God. Huh? and they can't get their heart and mind focused upon the Lord, and the power of God doesn't move the way that God wants it to. Do you know what? 
when they were in the upper womb waiting on the power of God to fall, huh? they had to come together in one mind and one accord. Do you know what that one mind and one accord was? They were focused on God. They wasn't worried about what was going on out in the world. They wasn't worried about the trials and the things they were going to face. They wasn't worried about the enemy. They wasn't worried about all the people that were after them. They were focused on God. And boy, when they were focused on God, the power of God fell in that place. I want you to know something, church. When we get our hearts and minds focused on God and quit worrying about the problems of life, quit worrying about what's going on tomorrow or next week, when we just get our hearts and minds focused on God and we come together in one mind and one accord to worship Him and praise Him, I'm going to tell you the Word of God says that God will inhabit the praises of His people. But my friend, we've got to come together in unity, Brother Jay, and get our hearts and minds focused on God if we want to see the power of God fall. Huh? Whom shall I fear? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. That's right, Jacqueline. Lazarus is living proof. I like what his sister said. Mary and Martha both. You hear that statement that they said to Jesus? Both of them accused him of not being on time. Mary and Martha both said, Lord, had you been here, our brother Lazarus would not have died. But we know uh, that Jesus went down and they rolled the stone away and he calls Lazarus and he says, come forth. And Lazarus came forth. I want you to know something tonight. We've got to continue believing that we serve an on-time God and he's more than able tonight. Quit accusing God the way that Mary Martha did uh, of not showing up on time and failing them and not meeting their needs. But trust in what he's choosing to do in your life. Because I promise you, when he speaks, see, the power of his word brings back life. The power of his word delivers people. The power of his word sets people free. It breaks the chains that bind. It heals. It does all that we need tonight. But we've got to learn to stop accusing and be mad at God. Huh? People sometimes sit in that church seat with their arms folded. They look all puffed up and angry at man and God and everyone else instead of them just waiting on God and just listening for His voice. Speak your word, Lord. Huh? Speak it that your servant may hear and go. Speak it that your servant may receive. Huh? He says... Though an army, listen, I want you to hear tonight, church, because this is where we are at as the church. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. He says, even though, Sister Crystal, uh, uh, the enemy is uh, coming against me, I'll not be afraid and I'll be confident in God. I'm going to tell you something tonight, church. We need to stop being afraid of the enemy and what the enemy is doing, Brother John. And instead of us worrying and afraid of what the enemy tr might try to do to us or our church, we need to be confident and we need to trust in God and not be afraid of the enemy. I'm going to tell you, I'll be honest with you tonight, Brother Mike, there's some people who are afraid to come out and be obedient to God at church because they're afraid, preacher, as soon as I do good here at the church and I get a good experience, I'm going to go home and the devil's going to attack me. Stop Stop worrying about the attacks of the enemy because I'm going to tell you, Sister Jacqueline, the enemy is going to attack you whether you're obedient to God or not. He's still going to attack you. But if you're obedient to God, you get empowered, you get strengthened, and you get the ability to defeat the enemy and rise above every attack and every challenge. Why do we as the church live in fear of an enemy who does not have power over the kingdom of God? See, what we forget, huh? The Word of God said, be sober and be vigilant huh? because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, go to and fro seeking whom he may devour. Here's the thing tonight, Brother Philip. He sounds like a lion. He sounds ferocious. He sounds scary, but he is not the lion, honey. There's only one lion. The Word of God tells us that he is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and we're talking about Jesus. He is the only true lion. He is the only one that has the power. The enemy 
enemy does not have the power to defeat the church. We know that by the story of Job. When God said, have you considered my servant Job? He said, I have, but you have a hedge of protection around him. Let me tell you something tonight. When are we going to trust and believe that we're not in this alone, that we are encamped by heavenly army tonight, by the heavenly host waiting at the command of God to defend us tonight? I remember uh, uh, one prophet uh, that they came down to kill. The enemy came down to kill him. He was in his tent and his servant saw the enemy coming and he run in in fear uh, and began to tell the prophet about the army that was going to kill them. And the prophet said, Oh Lord, uh, open my servant's eyes that he might see that there are more for us uh, than they are against us. Uh, and the word of God said he opened up the servant's eyes and it camped all about them was the army of the heavenly host. I want I want you to know something tonight, my friend. We need to believe that the army of God, that the heavenly host, that the kingdom of God, and that the power of God dwells in the life of the believer tonight, and the enemy cannot defeat us. Woo! Oh, Brother Mike, I know some of them ain't living right. Oh, but let me tell you something tonight. It says one thing. I have desired of the Lord that that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Huh? He says, the one thing that I desire is to be in God's presence. To be with God at all times. Honey, that's what's the matter with the world. They don't think they need God until something goes wrong. And, and then they want to chase after him. huh? They don't want to come to church. They don't want to serve. They don't want to worship. They don't want to believe. They don't want to trust. They don't want to walk. But boy, let me tell you. Let their family start falling apart. Let something begin to take place in their life. And then they want God to show up. I want you to know something tonight, church. You need to worship God and serve God and praise God when everything's going good in your on the top of the mountain and you also need to do it when you're in the valley. Honey, you need to serve him with all of your heart and with all of your mind at all times. Your desire should be to dwell in the presence of the Most High at all times. You say, Preacher, you believe that we can do that? Absolutely I do tonight because let me tell you something. The Word of God tells us in the book of Corinthians, He said, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. My friends, tonight the power of God for those who believe, for those who have been saved, for those who have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, the Spirit of God is living inside of you. That's that same Spirit that Jesus from the dead. It's the same spirit that raised Lazarus from the dead. It's the same spirit that protected the Hebrew children in the fiery furnace and brought down Goliath when David threw the stone. That same spirit is living inside of the ones who believe. My friend, if you are a genuine Christian, then you have the power of God living in you. Why are you walking around with your head hung down as if you're defeated and the enemy can destroy you when you should be walking in victory with with your head held high, knowing that we are the children of God. He says, Woo! He says, For in time of trouble, hear me, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Uh huh. In a time of trouble, Brother Dale, he will protect me, he will watch over me. He will take care of me. Huh? Listen. He said, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall not set me high up on a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Let me tell you something. I love that scripture. And this is the one that many people forget tonight, Brother Mike. I love because I have people tell me, some preacher said, I've come to church. But every time I come to church, brother so-and-so and and sister so-and-so, they hinder me from singing or preaching or teaching. They hinder me from worshiping God. I like that scripture said, Thou preparest the table before me even in the presence of my enemies. I want you to know tonight, Christian, you can eat, you can dine from the master's table, you can receive what you need even in the very presence of your enemy if you will just keep your eyes focused on him. Huh? He says, Whoo! He said, Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. 
huh? I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Let me tell you something. The writer here says, I'm going to offer praises unto the Lord in his tabernacle. Here's where a lot of people come up short when they don't want to come to the house of God and do the work that God has called them to do. Honey, I believe they got an answer to do to God for that. That's the reason why a lot of them are struggling in their walk with Jesus and their ministry is not doing what God wants it to do. But my friend, let me tell you, in the Old Testament, you know what the Word of God says? That when they didn't bring their sacrifices unto the tabernacle, the door of the tabernacle, and offer them unto God, that God would cut them all. I want you to know tonight, church, God's not playing games with you tonight. We've got to get serious, and when we get serious with God, God will get serious with us. When we are dedicated to Him, He'll be dedicated to us. When we honor Him and glorify Him and trust in Him and believe in Him, God will do the work tonight, church. He said, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Huh? He said, Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face. Boy, that's the problem with a lot of people. They don't want to seek his face, do they? Huh? They don't want to seek him. Brother Jay, let me tell you something. The Word of God says, if you seek, you shall find. If you knock, it shall be open. Huh? If you ask, you shall receive. And you've got to do all of that. How? In faith, believing tonight, church. He said, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, will I seek. Huh? Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God, of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. And listen to what he says. The writer here says, Lord, Lord, when my own mother and father forsake me, I'm so thankful I can still turn unto you, for I know you will never forsake me. Aren't you glad for that scripture that says tonight, Loretta? He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee, but go with thee all the way into the end of the age or the end of the world, depending on the version of the Bible you're reading tonight, church. He said, let me tell you something, when your friends forsake you, Huh? When your family forsakes you, when your co-worker forsakes you, when your neighbor, when everyone else forsakes you, God will still be there, my friend. See, that's the thing that we've got to learn tonight. Everyone else will disappoint us. Everyone else will come up short. But our God will not fail. He said, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. He said, Lord, he said, I'm trusting in you in this. He said, there's been those huh, who spoke falsely of me. Huh? Anybody ever been spoken about falsely? I have. I've had plenty of people who've spoken things about me, even though they don't know me, even though they don't know the intent of my heart, the desires of my life, or the thoughts of my mind. They don't know any of that tonight, Brother Jay, but they don't have any problem attacking Pastor Perry and bearing false witness against him. Why? Because they think that if they destroy Pastor Perry, that it'll make them be better. It'll boast them. Huh? They want to destroy the truth. They don't want the truth. I want you to know tonight, don't be afraid when people bear false witness against you because let me tell you it is not the world that they're speaking to because yes you say well, preacher there's a lot of people going to believe that garbage tonight there's a lot of people going to take that and run with that oh absolutely I know brother Jay because I've had people who no longer follow me or listen to me or, or go with me because they've listened to some of the false things they've heard people say you know, let me tell you something tonight they are not the ones who are going to empower me they are not the ones who's going to deliver me. They are not the one who's going to open the door for me. They are not the one who's going to make the way for me. And they definitely are not the ones who's going to decide whether if I go to heaven or not. I've got to keep trusting and believing regardless of the lies that people tell. Here, Somebody needs to hear this tonight. You need to keep trusting and believing regardless of the lies that people tell about you and on you to others. Because let me tell you something tonight, Brother Lynn. While we may not be behind the closed door as people are trying to destroy, we call it spiritual murdering. When people try to spiritual murder you in front of others, we may not be there, but let me tell you something. They cannot hide from the presence of the Almighty. God sees what's going on. As a matter of fact, God says what they do in darkness, He'll bring it to the marvelous light. Let me tell you, 
I'm not concerned about what they're trying to do against me as long as I'm trusting in God because God knows my intents. He knows my thoughts. He knows my feelings. He knows everything about us, Jacqueline. He knows if we're sincere or not, and that's what matters tonight. He says, I would have lost heart. Ain't this true? Unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He says, as the enemy surrounds me and wants to destroy me, Lynn, as the people bear false witness against me and try to tear me down and beat me up, huh? he says, I would have lost heart. I'm going to be honest with you tonight, church. Brother John, had I not fully grounded myself in God's word and learned the promises of God for myself and, and anchored in him and drawn close to him, I'm going to be honest with you. Pastor Perry would have gave up preaching way back there. Do you know why I still, 30-some years later, that Pastor Perry's still preaching and pastoring and believing? Because I believe in the promises of God. I believe in God's word. I believe in God's love. And I believe in what God has done in my life and the change that he's made in me. And I'm holding on with Jesus regardless of what the world may say or do. Let me tell you something tonight, church. That's exactly what you've got to do too. Some of you are struggling. I know some of you are being challenged because of what the world is saying and what the enemy is doing. Let me tell you something. Stop worrying about the world. Stop worrying about man. Stop worrying about the lies and all the things they're doing. And keep trusting God because God's word is the only truth. He said, let God be the truth and every man be a liar. I'm going to tell you something tonight, church. Trust in the word. Dig in, anchor in, know it, and stand on it tonight. He says, I like this. He said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. <clears throat> My friends, tonight, Sister Brenda, I know that every one of us are facing battles and challenges. And in those battles and challenges, our faith, our trust, and, and, and us waiting on God is being challenged. Now, I know there's a lot more that goes with that. Man, I could preach for a couple more hours on some of the other stuff that goes with this, Sister Crystal. But tonight, that's what God has led my heart to focus on, is trusting, waiting, and believing. My friend, I believe that if you can master those three things in God, in God's truth, I believe that you will be a stronger servant, that you will be a more dedicated servant, that you will see more victories, that you'll see more doors open, and that you'll see things happening in your life that you never thought possible. Tonight, we've got to keep trusting, waiting, and believing tonight, church. Let us pray. Father God, including Pastor Perry and everyone listening tonight, Lord. You see the areas of our life where that message has spoken to it. You see the areas of our life where we are vulnerable and we are challenged. But Father God, I know tonight that you did not send the message for us to feel bad and for us to give up and run away. But Father God, tonight you sent that message as a reminder to every one of us that you see where we are in our lives and that we need to keep trusting, believing, and waiting on you. For Lord, I know that the weight of the world and the challenges of life become heavy. I know that when the enemy is attacking and accusing falsely, that it becomes burdensome. But Father God, tonight I know that nothing can stop your plan in my life. Father God, the only thing that's going to keep your plan from being fulfilled in my life is when I get my eyes off of you and I get my eyes on everything else. Father God, help me to stay focused on you. Help me to keep my heart, my mind, and everything on you. Help me to stay anchored in your word and your truth tonight, Father God, and everyone listening tonight. Father God, I know that there are many fighting battles right now in many, many different ways. But Father God, I know that victory is yours. And I know tonight that, Father God, that once you speak your word into their lives, that, Father God, that victory is going to come for them. Father God, help us wait. Help us trust. And help us believe that, Father God, that we 
we may endure and hold on. For we know that, Father God, if we will endure, we get to reign with you. We'll get to receive from you and we'll find and experience your blessings. Father God, tonight, speak right now to those individuals tonight that need to hear it tonight. And let it, Father God, begin to give hope and encouragement. Let it begin to plant a seed that will grow and they'll become stronger and faithful. Father God, if there's one tonight that don't know you as Lord and Savior, Father God, I am so thankful that tonight, that tonight they can. Father God, all they've got to do is open their heart, ask you to forgive them of their sin to become the Lord of their life and let them begin to live for you and follow you. Father God, raise up our churches. Father God, not only Gordon Road, but there's many churches here tonight that are represented online. I pray, Father God, that you will anoint our churches, that you'll send revival to our churches, that our churches will grow, our people will be strong, and your power will be felt. Father God, let your will be done tonight that we may give all honor and glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. Thank you as always for praying with me. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for praying for others. Please make sure you click the share button tonight. Share tonight's message. Invite other people to listen. Invite other people to share. My friend, don't forget to come back tomorrow night at 9 o'clock for Winding Down with Pastor Perry. My friend, I pray wherever you go that God goes with you. Whatever you do, I pray that God will bless you, protect you, strengthen you, and guide you. But most of all, my friends, I am praying that God will use each and every one of you to reach someone else for the gospel truth. And my friend, I know he can do that tonight. Be blessed and have a wonderful night.